Welcome to an overview of the Weather Program Office Observations Program. I'm Mark Vincent, the manager of this exciting program. In the overview today, we'll start with a view of our mandates, mission, and focus areas, then zoom down to how we implement the program and end up with three project highlights. We have two very clear mandates. The first, the Weather Act, of which you'll hear a lot about during the program review, which has a quote of affordable and attainable advances and observational capabilities to support substantial improvement in weather forecasting. The second is a NOAA administrative order, policy on NOAA observing systems portfolio management that states an observing systems portfolio that is mission effective integrated, adaptable, and affordable. We derive our very concise, clear program mission from these mandates to advance observation capabilities to improve weather forecast and decision support. We implement this mission through three focus areas, find and fund observation capabilities, coordinate and facilitate transitions, and manage interagency and cross NOAA major programs. The engine behind this program is a very high performing team comprised of Dr. Sigail Thompson, Renee Richardson, and Sandy Lacourte. This chart shows the funding profile for our investments in R&D from FY17 through FY22. And as you can see, the budget has varied between two and a half million to over 10 million, and generally stabilizing on the four to $5 million range in the last few years. The early variability is due to congressional budget language uh, directing us to invest in technology such as phased, uh, airborne phased ray radar and infrasound in the early years. This chart shows our salary costs during the same time frame. Uh, as you can see, costs range from a little over 200,000 to 700,000 and a st staff count of one to four. Our observation became a program in FY18. Now I'd like to take a snapshot of our current status of the state of observation R&D funding. Regarding resources, we anticipate our R&D budget may stabilize around the four to $5 million per year, plus to be determined earmarks and supplementals. Um, to date, approximately 90% of our funding has been to extramural uh, organizations. We've moved to a cadence of funding announcements on two-year cycles for two-year projects. And we develop very strong relationships with customers, both operations and R&D. This helps balance the operational pull and the R&D push. Regarding requirements, we've developed very strong partnerships with the Weather Service Office of Observations, the hurricane community, uh, National Integrated Drought Information System, Weather Service Analyzed Forecast and Support, and the NESDIS Technology Planning and Integration for Observations Office. Also, we work very closely with the R&D community to identify opportunities for investments in uh, research and development. Uh, uh, this includes uh, communities such as the AMS National Network of Networks and the NOAA Emerging Technology Workshop. This is a snapshot of our most recent FY21 funding competition. It was driven by one priority, the Weather Act. We had robust interest in this competition when receiving over 91 letters of intent. We funded 18 projects with 22 extramural investigators. And there was a lot of uh, collaboration with NOAA uh, partners, uh, over 66. And these projects involve $10 million of funding over two years, so approximately $5 million per year. This map shows the locations of the institutions we funded 
as good geographic diversity. And uh, this also represents the diversity in project categories ranging from hurricanes to winter storms to urban heat. We'll conclude with three project highlights that represent our focus areas of find and fund, coordinate transitions, and manage. The first project highlight is dynamically targeted long range, long duration balloons. If you look at the graph on the bottom, traditional weather balloons or radiosons have single vertical ascent. Drop sons from very expensive aircraft have a single vertical descent and a short uh, time frame. Dynamically targeted long range, long duration balloons have 20 to 40 controlled vertical profiles and up to 16 days of flight time during which they record and transmit real time pressure, temperature, relative humidity, wind speed and direction. This project has already been collecting real time data during the FY22 hurricane season. The second project, Airborne Phased Array Radar, represents our focus area of coordinate and facilitate transitions. The context for this is tail Doppler radar on NOAA's existing Hurricane Hunter aircraft is a mission critical observing system. However, tail Doppler radar is not compatible with the new aircraft frame, the C-130, that will replace the Hurricane Hunter in 2030. Therefore, NOAA is at risk of losing this capability. APAR is a leading C-band radar technology that's being developed that could provide improved 3D winds and precipitation data. Think of a CAT scan of the hurricane environment. The results enabled by WPO funding and coordination include APAR preliminary design review was completed by NCAR in November 2021. Um, our investments have also advanced uh, the APAR technology to the NSF Mid-Scale Research Infrastructure Competition, um, which would be an award of $100 million. A final decision on whether this will be awarded or not uh, is expected in the February 2023 timeframe. And NOAA has a signed transition plan by five office directors involved in this technology. The final project highlight is sensor and PAR. This represents the focus area of managed interagency and cross NOAA programs. The context for this is NOAA's NEXRAD operational radars are currently in a service life extension program that will extend their operations to 2035. OAR R&D and coordination will help inform weather services analysis of alternatives for the $6 billion radar replacement system. The results enabled by the observations program coordination include serving as the project manager for the spectrum efficient national surveillance radar. This involved analyzing and coordinating and making a recommendation to DOC and NOAA to formally exit the program due to risk of not meeting NOAA's weather requirements. This also involved leading a congressional report to address this important decision. Currently, the observation staff is serving as the project manager for the phased array radar acquisition for risk reduction. This includes leading the acquisition process, leadership briefings, and follow-on report to Congress. To summarize, our mission is to advance observation capabilities to improve weather forecast and decision support. We do this through three focus areas, find and fund observation capabilities, coordinate and facilitate transitions, and manage interagency and cross NOAA programs. Thank you, and we look forward to continuing the conversation on the observations program in January with you.